God has been faithful. God has been faithful in your life. God has been faithful in my life. Every step that I've taken, God has been there with me. Every step in a valley, God has been there. Every mountaintop experience, God has been there. He has been faithful through our lives. Now we have a choice whether we're going to remain silent or not. Whether we're going to choose to worship Him, to praise Him, to exalt Him, to testify of His greatness in our lives, to remind ourselves how faithful He's been to us, to remind our neighbors how faithful He's been, to remind those loved ones who are not reconciled with Him, and to tell a lost and dying world that there is hope there is grace, there is mercy, there is love, there is peace, there is joy in the presence of God. God is faithful. He is faithful. And he's demonstrated that to us so many ways and in so many times and seasons in our lives. So here together as a family, we're going to join in prayer. There'll be some names on the overhead behind me. Let's join together with faith believing because we know that God has healed in our lives. We know that God has provided for us. We know that God has given us joy in a dark season. And so many names on this list, they're needing God in a very specific, practical, tangible way right now. And I know many of you have a need in your life that only God can meet. So let's join together as a family, praying, asking God to move in a way that only He can, that builds our faith, that encourages us to continue to give him praise and to give him glory. Let's join together in prayer. My Lord and my God, I truly, truly am humbled in your presence. Lord, but I cry out with a voice of praise and worship unto you. You are holy above all else, God. Our highest praise unto your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now in this spirit, dear God, of praise and worship of this family, Lord, I'm asking you to move in a supernatural way. Lord, that you will heal the body, dear God, from the top of the head to the sole of the feet, every sickness and every disease cast out in your name, dear Lord. Lord, that you will provide financially, that you will provide emotionally, that you will provide spiritually. Lord, we know that you are calling our loved ones. We are calling, that you are calling this world to reconcile them to you. Lord, help us be faithful stewards of that testimony that you have given to us, Lord. Give us boldness, give us confidence, give us wisdom, give us discernment, Lord. Help us truly be disciples, dear Lord, that you have called for this season, Lord. Every need that's brought before you, we trust in you. We believe in you. You are worthy of all praise and all glory. We thank you, Lord, for moving. We thank you, Lord, for healing. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your joy, for your peace, for your strength, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for the still, small voice. We thank you, Lord, for the wings of joy that you lift us from the dark place, God. You alone are worthy, God. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy is your name, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray, giving you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, church family, for joining together in prayer. Thank you for coming and being a part of South Bay Pentecostal this evening. Those of you joining online, thank you for joining us online. You truly are in the best place to hear from God and to have your life changed. I'd like to give you the opportunity, highly encourage you to get up from your seat, step out of your seat, reach across the aisle, greet one another, share a handshake, share a smile, welcome one another to South Bay this evening.
population of 275,000. In Northwest Chula Vista alone, there are over 60,000 residents. South Bay family, to make him known, we have work to do. Across America, Easter Sunday is historically the largest attended church service in any given year. South Bay family, here's the plan. Not one, not two, but three power-packed events celebrating the gospel of Jesus Christ. On Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m., we'll gather to reflect on the death and burial of Jesus Christ. This traditional service will feature communion, candlelight, music, and a message reflecting on the value, the gravity of Christ's blood and Calvary's cross. On Saturday, March 30th, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m., here in this parking lot, we're planning to host one of the largest community events we have ever hosted with a focus on letting Chula Vista know that South Bay Pentecostal Church is here. Of course, an event isn't complete without food, games, jumpers, a kid's Easter egg hunt with over a thousand eggs. Through this event, we are being a church on a hill, a light, letting Chula Vista know that we are here for them and making it known that we are his people and he is our God. On Easter Sunday, March 31st, will celebrate victory over death, hell, and the grave, a celebration of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Invite your family and your friends. You ready for Easter Sunday? Easter weekend? And I invite you to stand at this time, preparing to return the tithes, given the offerings. But make important note there, Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, you want to be present. More importantly, you want to invite others. Personally invite others. Social media is active. Share, repost. Get others to attend your church. Because how many of you love your church? Most of you love your church. How many of you would love to have your loved ones here in church with you next week? Invite them to come. We pray. We're going to have this season, this week of prayer. We're going to have prayer on Wednesday as well. We're praying that God will do a major supernatural work in the lives of the family and the community here in Chula Vista. And you can do your part by being a part of this family, by sharing an invitation, and then there's plenty of other opportunities to be a part of what God is doing here at South Bay. I'm going to give you the opportunity to return your tithes, give your offerings. There should be four ways to give on the screen behind me. You should have received your legacy pledge cards. If you have not turned those in, those are our opportunities to pledge for the 40th anniversary of our pastoral anniversary this coming year, preparing the church, making some repairs, getting equipped and ready for that celebration. That's another opportunity that God is going to challenge you to be faithful with what he's provided for you. So in a moment, we're gonna pray over the offering, but then we're gonna also ask you to march and give. Here at South Bay, we give celebratory. We give in rejoicing. We give because God has provided to us to give. And so we say we want you to march, and we're not just saying it, we want you to march. As part of this family, we want you to march together in giving. Now, there could be some collisions if you all marched in the different directions, right? So some of you remember that we used to march in a very coordinated, structured way. I'd like to see if we can return to that this evening. So if you don't mind, let me give you some instructions. This section here, you're gonna march out this direction, come down to the basket, and return up this aisle into your seats. Now, if you don't move out of your seat, you're going to have some chance that someone would stumble over you. You don't want to be a stumbling block, right? So you're going to march, whether you have to give or not, to make sure you're not causing somebody else to stumble, okay? This section, you're all going to stand, come down the aisle this way, give, and return up this aisle, all right? What direction do you guys think you're going? You're gonna go down this aisle as well because this is a one-way aisle. They're gonna come down this way, you're gonna come down this way, and you're gonna return up this aisle. This section's gonna go down this aisle and return up this way. Those of you up on the shelf can figure it out for yourself. Let's do this in celebration of how much God has blessed us. He has been faithful. 
we give in our tithes, we return our tithes, we give offerings, we're faithful stewards of everything he's provided for us. Let's pray. Lord, we're grateful and thankful for this church family, the true spirit of giving and joy that you've put in this church family. I'm asking you to bless each and every member of this church for their faithfulness to you. Bless those who give. Bless those who marched and don't give for their willingness to be part of this celebration here tonight. We thank you. We ask it be used for your perfect will. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Church family, march in an organized way and give. Bring our joy to life. 
Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting us in a mighty way right now. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands to heaven? Hallelujah. Don't miss this moment, church. Don't miss this moment. Lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. And just engage in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Lift up the name of the Lord. Let the presence of God begin to renew you, begin to refill you, restore you, heal you. Hallelujah. In this place. Almighty oh, Jesus, you are here and you're moving in our midst and you're ministering to our needs and you're working in our hearts. You're working in our minds. You're working on our behalf in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Let hearts be mended. Let minds, hallelujah, be made up. God, I pray that our souls would be saved. God, hallelujah, I worship you. I magnify you. God, you are high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. The King, the King, the King has entered into this place. Not just this house, it's His house, but into our hearts, into our lives. Let the King in. Let the King reign. Let the King, hallelujah, speak life into you today. The King of Kings is here. And who is this King of glory? Who is this Lord? He's the Lord God Almighty. He's the Lord great and greatly to be praised. His name is Jesus. Almighty oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost moving mightily on this Passion Week. Hallelujah. Someone is being changed. I believe it. Lives are being transformed. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. You've come to the right place, church. You've come to the right place for God to meet you, for God to heal you, for God to speak to your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You've come to the right place to get your joy. You've come to the right place to get your peace. You've come to the right place to get the answer that you've been praying for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is moving in our midst, and I thank Him for that. I'm thankful for the message we heard this morning. Hallelujah. We were encouraged. We were brought to a place of life change and decision making. Hallelujah. And it is going to flow all together. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that. I give God praise because God is answering prayers. I give God praise. Hallelujah. Sister Pacheco is in the house here tonight. She was here this morning. Just last week she was hospitalized. But amen. Thank you, Jesus, for his healing touch. I give God praise because Brother Nobbs reports he's doing well. He's progressing. And if he's watching right now, Brother Nobbs, we're praying for you. We're believing God. Hallelujah for his healing touch in your life. I give God praise because one of our own South Bay Saints just this week received, hallelujah, another job offer and placement. And I believe God is providing. God is doing a work. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Almighty Jesus. Almighty Lord, hallelujah. Amen. God is doing a great work. I give God praise because just this morning, one of our students from South Bay Christian Academy, Nathaniel Best, he's right here on the second row, was baptized in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's one of our students. He's been coming to church. Got the Holy Ghost last spring. Amen. And today was baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. His dad and his mom are thrilled. They're ecstatic. They're thankful for what God is doing in his life. And what happened to him can happen to you. You can experience the moving of God in your life. Amen. Amen. And I know God's doing a tremendous work. If we go to the book of Luke, chapter number 19, Luke, chapter number 19, the triumphant entry, entry of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and we are entering into this Passion Week. Don't forget, this is a week filled with prayer and fasting. Don't forget that this is going to be a week where God is going to move and souls are going to be saved. I believe it on Wednesday night. Amen. We're going to have a special time of consecrated uh, prayer and dedication for what is due to come in the week that we have. So you don't want to miss out. God is going to move mightily. And I believe if you come with a need, God is going to heal you. Amen. God is going to do a work in your life. We are thankful for the ministry that is happening throughout the South Bay community, reaching out to those that are needing the gospel and needing a warm hand, a warm smile, 
some food, some clothes. I'm thankful for the outreach that's taken place, amen, and our downtown outreach through the Rubios, through Brother and Sister Munoz. Thank you, Brother and Sister Munoz. Thank you to the Rubios doing at work, amen. I'm thankful for the small groups coming together. I'm thankful for God just moving, amen. God working in a tremendous and mighty way. He is doing it, amen, and he's doing a great, great work. I ask that you would keep my daughter in prayer. That's why my wife is not here tonight. It wasn't here this morning. My daughter is feeling ill. So I would pray that God would touch her. Amen. And uh, be with her. And I know that God wants to touch your life. God wants to meet your need. Luke chapter number 19. We begin with verse number 28. It says, And he had thus spoken. He went before ascending up. To Jerusalem. So Jesus is entering to Jerusalem, skipping to verse number 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Have you seen God do a mighty work in your life? Come on, let's rejoice. Come on with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for touching my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my body. Thank you, Jesus, for putting my family back together. Thank you, Jesus, for taking away the addiction. Take, thank you, Jesus, for taking away the sin and the shame and the guilt. They could not keep silent. Verse 38, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Another translation says, Hosanna to him. Verse number 40, and he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should not hold their peace, what happened in between? They said, tell your disciples to keep quiet. He says, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, that the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, if thou hast known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee on every side. I shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and thou shalt not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Jesus is coming to visit you soon. Don't miss the moment. And when he went into the temple, he began to cast out them that sold therein and them that brought bought, saying unto them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple, but the chiefs and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. And he could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Jesus does a lot of things in these few passages of scripture. It's the triumphant entry of Jesus. It's the passion week of the Lord. Can you help me pray? Father, we thank you for the leading of your spirit. We thank you for your confirming word. We thank you for the word we heard this morning, pursuing a palm of praise. And God, I pray you would help us tonight. God, there is a hunger and there is a thirst and there is a faith that is present in the room tonight. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that there are going to be things that are going to happen that are done only by your supernatural move and touch. Anoint my lips to speak and your people's ears to hear. In the mighty, powerful, greatest name that is above every other name. At this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. And that name is Jesus. We declare it by shouting amen. Can you give the Lord a praise before you're seated? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, you may be seated. With the help of the Holy Ghost today, I speak to you on this topic, and that is this, pursue the coming of the Lord. Pursue the coming of the Lord. And when Jesus would begin his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, after all that he had done, all the miracles that he had pursued to do, it began the week of his passion, his arrival to a body and a group of believers that were anticipating the, the coming of the Lord. For them to see that time will run out, and that they will see that it may run out, but they didn't want to miss that moment. 
and to see him do the miraculous. And so today we've gathered in the house of the Lord. You've come to the right place. You've come to the, the place where we can be changed. And we can turn our hearts and our minds from the things that have distracted you throughout the entire week. Let me tell you, those things will be there when you go back home. Those things will be there when you go back to work. That, that assignment will still be in your inbox in your life. There will be tasks and reminders and things that try to keep you at bay. But let me remind you that when you enter into the presence of God, there is nothing that can bring the peace that passes all understanding. There's nothing that can bring the hope in your moment of despair. There's nothing that can bring light in the middle of the, your darkness. There's nothing that can bring healing in the middle of the deepest and darkest valley. You've come to the right place. Amen. And so it's a pivotal moment in this uh, entry, in this life of Jesus, where this triumphant entry begins and he begins his passion week. What is passion? It's that desire to go beyond the surface level. It's going the extra mile. It's not just doing the bare minimum, but I've got a passion to do something. And this week, we're going to see our church family come together, in passionate prayer. And there's going to be passionate prayer that moves upon the people. We're going to see the, the, the group, the body of believers in this house. And I'm so thankful for Brother Mike and Sister Rachel Garcia that are leading our Easter weekend. And I want to give them a shout out. Let's keep them in prayer. Hallelujah. They've got teams that are working. And so Friday, we're going to have this service and we're going to have a moment, as, as Pastor Hodges mentioned this morning, not, not just celebratory, but it's a somber moment to partake in the Lord's communion, to remember why he did that, remember why he saved us. And so I've got to have my heart ready, my life ready to receive that. And then, Lord willing, on Saturday afternoon, we're going to have a community event to gather together. And there's passion that's moving. There's people that are tired, people that have had long days, people that have have worked long hours. There's people that have put in financial things towards this, but they're going out for passion. They're going out to reach souls that need to hear the gospel. They're going out to help people receive community in the church. There's nothing like the church. And then coming Sunday, we have the worship team and the praise team and those leading us and ushering the presence of God. And, and nothing's by mistake and, and nothing's by accident. Nothing just happens. But you've got people that are passionate, people that are moved with compassion. I want to be moved with compassion for the hungry hearts and the thirsty souls. I want to be moved with compassion for the people that run to an altar and they say, I need God to change my life today. I want to be moved with compassion when the person giving you your coffee at your coffee shop has things within their lives and they're just hoping for you to tell them, God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to be moved with compassion when I see people in my work side just hoping that you would uh, get your nose out of what you're reading and be able to say, God can touch your life. I want to be moved with compassion when those that are needy and they need God. Hallelujah. And so this passion leads them and move them. Jesus knew that it was this week he would be betrayed. He knew that in this week, the very same palms that worshiped him in Hosanna would be palms as well, would come out and smack him and slap him in the face. It would be those same things that he would endure and he did it for you and I. It was the passion, hallelujah, that brought him to that Calvary's cross. It was that passion that brought him to that place to offer himself the precious blood of Jesus, took away my sins. Come on, somebody, the precious blood of Jesus healed my heart. The precious blood of Jesus restored my soul. The precious blood of Jesus brought me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He did it for you and I. How would you feel in the week of passion? You knew you are going to endure such things. I'm going to endure portrayal. I better not hand out this card. I'm going to endure some heartache. I better not hand out this card. Oh, no. But he said, I'm moved with compassion. The Bible tells us that we find ourselves in this anticipation of the crowd waiting for Jesus. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss the moment. We get so caught up in doing other things that we miss the moment. Don't miss the moment when Jesus is moving in your life. And that's why I pray that we say, God, and everything that's a distraction into my life today, everything that's a distraction, I don't want to miss the moment. I've only got 90 minutes. I've only got 120 minutes to be in this place. I don't want to miss the moment. All that stuff is still going to be there, but I don't want to miss the moment of where you're moving, of where you're walking. God, I don't want to miss the moment where you could speak into my life. I don't want to miss the moment to have heartache. 
of yesterday and heartache of the future. It's always still going to be there. But I've got a hope, my friends. I've got a hope that Jesus is coming back soon. I've got a hope, hallelujah, that I'll dance on those streets of gold. I've got a hope that I'll have him here say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. I've got a hope where I can go to a place where there'll be no tears, no sorrows, no pain, no things. But I've got a hope that my life is not going to end up here as long as I dedicate myself to Jesus. I've got a hope for eternity and you ought to have a hope for eternity too. That's why I'm not worried about eternity if I've got my life right with Jesus because my Bible says that I am going to be caught up and it's going to be a moment in a twinkling of an eye Well, no longer will I be bound here but I'll be set free on the streets of gold. I want to go to those golden streets. I want to cross those gates of pearl. I want to go to a place where I've been redeemed where I've been saved, where I've been blood bought, hallelujah. And that's why the message of eternity should not scare and put fear into the child of God. Amen, hallelujah. And if you have yet to decide where you want to end your eternity in, you can decide and you can let Jesus work in your life. And they anticipated Jesus to come into this life and to give them this praise. And they worshiped him and they give him praise and they gave him glory. And Jesus would use this mode of transportation, wasn't fancy, he would use a donkey. In a world where kings symbolize their power and the greatest and the most magnificent of horses and carriages, he would deliberately choose a donkey, embodying the humility that he would take, embodying the peace that he would have. And this challenges us, you and I, to examine our lives, to examine our attitudes towards the power and the humility that we should balance ourselves with. We are seeking the only recognition by one person, and that is Jesus. I've got to seek for my Lord to say, well done. I've got to seek for my God to say, well done. I've got to seek for him, and I do this for an audience of one. We don't do this for an audience of the people throughout, but we sing and we praise and we worship for an audience of one. And so God, let me embrace this same humility. Let me embrace this same thing that the power isn't because of me, but all power, they sung it tonight, belongs to Jesus. All power belongs to him. Hallelujah. I know he rode in a donkey. Hallelujah. I know he came in in a humble, lowly donkey, but oh, the the power of his resurrection proved, hallelujah, that the power of his presence could not hold, you got to be held in a grave. It can't be held in a tomb. And we're going to see and realize next week the power of his resurrection, my Jesus entered in. And so the crowd would respond. They would see him. They would shout praise. And, and we know that in leading up to this, Jesus would tell his people, be quiet. Don't tell nobody about what I'm doing. Don't tell nobody. But at this moment, he knew that he was about to enter into the greatest week of his life. And so he knew that the, the people would immediately cry out. They would cry out. They would cry out. And he reminds those that ridiculed the others that were crying out that if you hold their peace, that these very stones will cry out. Hallelujah. There's something significant about the proclaiming the glory of God in our lives. I don't want the stones to speak louder than I. I don't want things of nature to speak louder than I. Whether you realize it or not, every Everything worships God. Everything worships him. He created everything and it was created to worship him. But God forbid I let something out in the forest. I let something out in nature out worship me. He's given you a voice. He's given you two hands. He's given you the ability to dance. He's given you the ability to lift up your voice and to shout with triumph and say, Jesus, had it not been for you who was on my side, I wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah, I'm not going to let a stone and a rock take my place. One of my dear friends, Anthony Trimble, would write and inscript a song. Hallelujah, one of my dearest friends. And he would die and be, he would move from this earth into the next. Hallelujah. And he would leave a family behind. And as he was filled with cancer and filled with all these diagnoses and things in his life, he still would write a song. I ain't going to let a rock take my place. How much more me? I don't have those things and I'm thankful for that. How much more me? I don't have a diagnosis of death. How much more? It's a testimony of what he was singing about. That God is greater than everything that you can encounter. He's greater than every disease. He's greater than every setback. So I'm not going to let a stone take my place. 
Don't let a stone take your place. Come on, don't let a stone take your place. Don't let a stone take your place. Don't let a rock take my place. Hallelujah. What will happen when you get that news? I ain't going to let a rock take my place. I ain't going to let a rock take my place. I'm going to shout it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to love it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for me. Don't let the enemy stop you from praising God. Don't let the enemy stop you and tell you your testimony is stale, that it's old, it's overused. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep saying it anyway. I'm going to keep proclaiming it anyway. You, you don't let God try to tell you or the enemy try to tell you you don't have a testimony worth sharing. Your testimony is not as good as so-and-so's. And, and the enemy would mess with me like that. Uh, you don't have a testimony like those. You know, because I, I don't have those testimonies of being addicted to drugs and alcohol and all those things. Never had a, a cigarette smoke, nothing like that. And I used to be... Uh, contemplating whether or not I had a testimony. But then the Lord reminded me, hallelujah, the very fact that he kept me. Come on. The very fact that he kept me is a testimony. Hallelujah. And I can say, thank you, Jesus. I've never had to do those things. I haven't done those things. Thank you, Jesus. So don't let the enemy try to tell you you don't have a testimony. The fact you're here tonight, hallelujah, should be enough to say, I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you, God, for keeping me. I thank you, Jesus, for it all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you, God. And so I want Jesus to know that my response to him is going to be greater than every other thing and everything that I'm responded and reacted to this week. Hallelujah. Some things are going to want your reaction. Some things are going to want your response. Hallelujah. But let it be said of you that the greatest thing that you do with your voice and your praise in your life is to give God the praise greatly this week. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give it to my problem. It ain't worth it anyhow. I ain't going to give it to my raise because I'm going to need another one next year anyhow. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give it to this and that because I'm going to need another one next year anyhow. But I'm going to give it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Jesus God Almighty. The triumphant entry is here. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss the moment, church. I don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. I don't want to miss it. 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 Hallelujah. This is the day that he has made. Hallelujah. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Jesus was selective of to whom he would uh, reveal his identity to. He, he, would, he would, after Peter's confession uh, that we see in Matthew 16, in Mark chapter 8, and in Luke chapter 9, uh, he strictly charged them and commanded them to tell no one. But at this result of him coming into their lives, they began to rejoice, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And so some people were upset with that. And together they took offense with that. And they were they were wanting them to be quiet. And later down, it's those same people that took offense to that is the same people that wanted to destroy him. Beware, my friends and my church family. Beware, beware, beware of people and things that try to muzzle your praise. Beware of things that try to stop your praise. Beware of things and situations and characters, hallelujah, that try to stop your praise. Guess what? I'm not going to let nothing stop my praise. I'm not putting a muzzle on my praise. I'm not putting a muzzle on my hand clapping. I'm not putting a muzzle on my dance. I'm not putting a muzzle on it. I'm not going to let nothing stop my praise. I'm not going to let nothing stop my praise. You need to look at everything that's trying to stop you and say, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let it stop my praise. Hallelujah. There's got to be a muzzle breaking. Hallelujah. Earth shattering praise that happens in our world today. Hallelujah. That's why we need a church. That's why we need a people that's going to say, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops. I'm going to lift up my voice. I'm going to lift up my voice. You know how those walls came down? They didn't have hammers and sledgehammers and bombs and guns and weapons of mass destruction. They had their voice. They marched around the walls. They shouted. Hallelujah. And those walls came tumbling down. There's no wall that's going to be kept up when your praise is elevated. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Almighty God, you think that you need more. Hallelujah. He's given it your voice. He's given your voice. Hallelujah. He's given you your voice. And this hostility to Jesus and this authority that he had is not limited to this just first century people in church that existed, but it's characterized in every century, even our own that we're living in today. The church of today is still under attack. It's still under scrutiny. It's still under uh, places and people and legislators and legislation trying to make futile attempts to abolish and outlaw this precious, precious word, to try to abolish and outlaw that what we preach. Hallelujah. But it's those things that they're trying to get away and trying to take away. And we're living in a day where evil is being called good and good is being called evil. And we need to shout it now more than ever. As for me and my house, come on. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, hallelujah. I'm not going to let nobody try to diminish this word. I'm not going to let anyone try to mess up this word. This is the word of God that has brought me. It's the word of God that's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's the bread of life for my soul. It's the word that entered me, hallelujah, and came to me in a still small voice. It's the word that shouted fire to me that brought me to an altar. I'm thankful for the taught word. I'm thankful for the preached word. I'm thankful for the spoken word. I'm thankful for the given word. And I'm thankful for the written word that has been in my life. Are you thankful for the word? And I'm thankful that it's still relevant here today as it was back then. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the word. And there's still hatred and rebellion against Christ and against the church and persecution against his disciples and it continues to increase up to this very day and I fear that many Christians will be tempted to think that Christ is no longer riding triumphantly in your lives I'm here to tell you this evening that nothing could be further from the truth that when Jesus rides into your life when Jesus enters into your life the stones are going to cry out time will run out and the robbers that are trying to come against you are going to be cast out hallelujah the stones will cry out the very ones that he said would cry out and he's also talking about the stony heart of man I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever has tried to infiltrate your heart that you say oh Lord let my heart be filled and welled up with praise that even my stony heart that was caught in the world has been redeemed and healed and it's going to cry out and sing the praises of God hallelujah thank you Jesus and so we see that we have fallen in, 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 in time and scripture tells us that the human human heart is compared to a stone it's compared to the negative reactions that we face and no one necessarily will, will try to blame you for that we are really really human with real emotions and, and it is, comes by no surprise that we deal with things in our heart and the sinful man that is against your soul the devil himself is against God he hates God he hates this messianic promise and in the upper room hallelujah he'd been betrayed that night he'd been betrayed by one of his own disciples and he was realizing what was happening to him it would happen to him and it would happen to his church in the future he was hated John chapter 15 verses 18 through 19 says if the world hates you you know that it hated me more before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love his own but because you are not of the world I have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you you just better believe that when you make a decision to live for Christ not everything's going to be all perfect as you expected but I've got to make up my mind I've got to draw a line in the sand and I say I want to build my house on the rock I don't want to build my house on the sand you've got to make up your mind and say I want to build my life on something that is real because at the end of the day no one else died for your soul no one else shed blood for you no one else healed you at the end of the day no one else gives you this peace it was Jesus it was Jesus it was Jesus thank you for the coming of the Lord thank you for the coming of the Lord thank you for the coming of the Lord and we preach about the coming of the Lord we preach about the coming of the Lord Jesus is coming soon will you be waiting will you be ready would you be waiting to, for his arrival oh God I want to be ready for you however hate is not the only power at work in this world but the Holy Ghost thank God Almighty the Holy Ghost thank God Almighty is still at work today and it's blowing like a mighty rushing wind supernaturally causing the heart 
hearts of stone that are among the people today to become hearts of flesh. And Ezekiel prophesied that this would happen. In Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19, it says, I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh. I'm thankful that God has healed my heart. I'm thankful that God has touched my heart. Hallelujah. I pray that God heals your heart. Don't let your heart be stony. Don't let your heart be stuck in that place. But God, let your spirit transform me. Let your spirit move in me. Let your spirit turn this stony heart into a heart of flesh, which means a heart that can be touched by him, can be moved by him, moved by his spirit. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. You ought to pray in the Holy Ghost every day. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives you comfort. The Holy Ghost gives you peace. Come on, I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is more than a certificate. It's more than a picture. The Holy Ghost gives me power over the sin that tries to destroy me every day. The Holy Ghost gives me peace. Come on. The Holy Ghost begins to pray on my behalf. The Holy Ghost was praying on your behalf, Pastor, for your deed. And I believe it. It wasn't just us. It wasn't just us coming together, but it was the Holy Ghost in power. It's the Holy Ghost that can move at a Pentecostal birthday party. Only at South Bay's member's birthday party can someone be slain in the spirit. At LaBella's on the third floor in the upper room. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost that changes everything. It changes everything. And Christ, hallelujah, is not impotent, which means he doesn't lax in the face of this world's hatred. But he is causing stones. I believe it. To cry out in praise. And this should be an encouragement to us all. As we live in a nation becoming increasingly, increasingly hostile to both Christ and his message. That we present people with the good news. The powerful news of Jesus. That Jesus literally comes riding into our situation. He comes riding into our lives when you were needing him more. And many will react negatively to that. But there will be always some that will respond in faith and praise. As you pass out these cards, I pray you get a card before you leave. Don't worry if they toss it on the floor. Don't worry if they try to debate you. Just give them and say, Jesus loves you. We'd like to invite you. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what may happen the outcome just say Jesus loves you you're not there to give them and win them over in that 30 there's 30 second interaction just you're inviting them about the good news Jesus will work it out and Jesus would tell them about the time running out he entered into Jerusalem and he signaled that the time for his ultimate sacrifice was drawing near similarly his entry into our lives would serve as a reminder that the time is running out we need to heed to his call and repent for the day is at hand. We need to have faith before it's too late. We need to have faith. Hallelujah. He says in verse 44, you did not know the time of your visitation. I don't know the time. They were waiting for him when he ascended. He ascended into heaven and they said, when will you reveal to us your power in the kingdom? When will you reveal? He said, it's not for you to know the time, but just be ready. Just wait for me. Just be ready. Some of us are so worried about knowing the time so that you could do everything in your life so that you can be there on time. If I know it starts at 6 p.m., the coming of the Lord is at 7 p.m., we have 52 minutes left. And you're going to do everything right now to get your life straight. That's not how it works. He said, you got to have faith to just live your life. And Work on it every day because there's coming a day and oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus, I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, and as he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land, oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. Are you waiting? Are you anticipating? Are you waiting for the coming of the Lord? And oh, are you waiting for that promise? Come on, if you're waiting for that promise, and oh, what a day that will be. Would you lift him up? Would you give him praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want to miss the moment. I don't want to miss the moment. I don't want to miss this visitation. I don't want to miss this moment with Jesus. Don't ever miss the moment. 
when Jesus is passing by. Don't miss the moment. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever believes in him is condemned, does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son, but he is the judgment. He's the light. He's the light who's come into the world. We are people, the word says, we are people loved. The darkness, that we love the darkness rather than this light that he gives us because their works are evil. But I don't want to be like those people, as it was said in John chapter 3. I want to be like those people. I want to love the word. I want to love him. Hallelujah. And so I want to visit with him. He wants to visit with me, but his long-suffering patience and mercy is with us. He's long-suffering. I'm thankful that he's waited on me. I'm thankful he's waited on me. Hallelujah. But there's going to be a moment when that waiting will no longer be. Jesus is long-suffering, friends. He's long-suffering. But what will happen when time runs out? I've got to make a choice. There's an old poem of him that says, To every man and nation comes a moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. For some great cause, some great decision, offering each the bloom and blight. And it ends with one of these sentences and stances. It says, twixt the darkness and the light. How long has Jesus been riding into your life with love and mercy, and yet you haven't allowed that visitation to have impact in your life? How many times have you heard the gospel preached, and yet you have not believed? Don't take the long-suffering of God for granted. Don't take it with indifference. Don't presume that you will have your tomorrow. Don't presume that you will have it. And as we learn today, our tomorrow is not promised. And faith is only possible when God turns our hearts from stone into flesh. And if you feel your heart beginning to soften today, it's the leading of God and his spirit begin to do a work in your life. And don't delay and don't miss this opportunity. If God is working in your heart today, let him finish the good work that he's begun in your life. Let him finish the work that he's begun in your life. Don't leave this place with a halfway softened heart. Don't leave this place because not everything is figured out. But let God heal you today. Don't miss the coming of the Lord. I want to pursue it. I want to pursue the coming of the Lord. And so Jesus would tell them, don't miss this visitation. And then he would go boldly into the house of prayer. And he would see people selling and giving and going and not having regard for the house of prayer. The Bible says that he cleansed the temple. He goes out. He had rode in with a donkey. He tells him about the stones and he tells him about the visitation. And he goes to the temple. The temple, this is the temple church. The temple is a house of prayer. It's not a playground. It's not a place just for social interaction. Those things are involved and incorporated in the family of God. I'm not against those things. But this is the house of prayer. Our kids need to know that this is a house of prayer. Our young ones need to know that this is a house of prayer. And maybe now in our ages that we are in today need to be reminded that this is the house of prayer. It's not a checkbox in my weekly to-do list. It's not just something I do so I can say I'm a Christian, but this is the house of prayer. But they had turned it into a den of thieves and it was defiled. It was his dwelling place, but they were doing things in there that they were not supposed to be doing, including the darkness and the sin. And the Bible says there were uh, uh, dishonest people in the, in the tables there, changing money, exchanging things. And so he got upset and he turned the tables over and we need him to purify our hearts, church. We need Jesus to turn over the tables of those things in our lives, to purify our homes, to, to purify our phone history, to purify everything that's in front of us, to purify our our cues on what we watch, on what we listen to, on what we're doing. God, drive those things out of my life. But not only did he drive those things out, but there were merchants that were robbing the Gentiles and they were robbing them of an opportunity to worship God. But God was there to take away the robbers and those that were robbing God of the worship that those that they wanted to desire to do. And so I've come today to remind you that I'm not going to let the enemy steal and rob me anymore. 
I'm not going to let the enemy steal things in my life anymore. But guess what? The battle is not yours. It belongs to Jesus. Jesus walked in and began to cast the robbers out. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my peace. Come on. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my praise. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my joy. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my victory. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my passion. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my anointing. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my family. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my love for my brothers and sisters. I'm not going to let the enemy steal the joy unspeakable and full of glory. The enemy is going to be cast out in your life. I believe it. Hallelujah. And if you study that word cast out, it wasn't just things, but there was demonic oppression that was moving in the midst of that evil, dark moment. And I believe that things in Satan has been trying to bind you with and hold you with in the name of Jesus. Those things are going to be cast out in your life. Hallelujah. Yeah, the sins that are weights and chains around your mind, around your heart, around things that have tried to withhold you and stop you. God is going to set you free. Come on. Someone's going to be set free from the work of the enemy. Someone's going to be set free from the sins that are trying to beset you. Someone's going to be set free from the things that are causing shame, that are putting on guilt in your life, that are separating your family. And Jesus is here to kick the robbers out. They don't belong in your home. They don't belong with your kids. They don't belong in your Sunday school classes. They don't belong in our youth group. They don't belong in our men. They don't belong in our ladies. They don't belong in our school. They don't belong in the church. It's time for us to make up our mind and say, Jesus, cast the thief out. The enemy come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Abundantly, is there anyone thankful for the abundant life that Jesus wants to give you? Almighty God, as you stand with me today, hallelujah, some thieves are being cast out. And that's why I'm anticipating the coming of the Lord. And I don't want to miss this moment. Oh, are you talking about the rapture? I'm not just talking about the rapture. But I'm talking that moment next pastor. We come together as a church. We come together with a body of believers. When people go together at City Hall, thank God uh, the, the Lord gave Sister Linda victory at City Hall this week. Hallelujah. She went with Sister Carmela. They went out. We prayed and anointed them with oil. And the Lord gave her an opportunity to be a light. Hallelujah. I believe Jesus was there. And I believe Jesus helped her. Hallelujah. What was that? A visitation of the Lord. Amen. God is moving in your life. Don't ever miss the moment. Don't 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 miss the moment. I had a friend this morning text me. He said, oh, my goodness, I'm a grandpa for the very first time. I said, awesome. What does he look like? He goes, I don't know. I'm out of state. I said, man. Oh, man. He goes, but I'm, I'm trying to get there now. I'm trying to get there now. And I, I, I know he was doing the... What he, was, what he was supposed to be doing, I'm not, but the, the, the fact is, there's a moment that was missed, and you can never have that back. You can't have that moment back. You can't have that moment back when you miss the moment. There's a moment right now. There's a moment today. There's a moment this evening. Don't miss the moment where Jesus wants to move in your life and heal your soul. As we reflect in the triumphant entry of Jesus, somebody needs to realize that I want to be ready for him. Don't want to miss this moment. Don't want to miss this moment. I don't want to miss this moment. I want to embrace the humility that God wants to put in my life. I've got to be humble. I've got to be hum hum humble in the sense and, and, and walk in humility and realize that I can't do this on my own. I need you, Jesus. God, I'm not going to let a stony heart reside in me anymore. But the stones are going to cry out. This stony heart is going to become a heart of flesh. And I'm going to declare the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus is going to enter into where we dwell and try to worship him. It could be your home. It could be your workplace. For our kids, little Mario, Mario Jr. It could be your campus. We are trying to start a Bible study. It could be 
where you're working, wherever you're at. But God wants to say, I want to cleanse some things in your life. And I got to be okay when the cleaner comes to town. I got to be okay when Jesus begins to disrupt my life. I got to be okay when he says, I'm not going to let the thief live there anymore, Brother Pacheco. But I'm going to come in and give them peace. And I'm going to give them life. and I'm going to give them joy. I'm not going to let the thief reside in the place where I try to worship. It's time to let Jesus cast the thieves out. But it only happens when we pursue the coming of the Lord. I'm not just preaching about the rapture tonight, which is important. Don't ever forget it. Heard it all my life, all my young years, hallelujah. I've heard it all my life. But I don't ever want to miss the moment when Jesus is trying to encounter with me tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that there would be stony hearts that would turn into hearts of flesh tonight. I pray, God, that there would be an opportunity to make today count and realize that this is an hour of visitation. And I realize that today, Jesus, you want to cleanse my life and you want to take out the robbers and the thieves that are trying to steal and extinguish the peace and the persistence and the love that I have for you. Oh, God, I'm awaiting and I'm pursuing the coming of the Lord. You're coming soon. But guess what, Lord? I realize you're here right now in my present time of help in the mighty name of Jesus. If you need God to help you today, I invite you to boldly step out from where you're at to find a place of an altar. And don't miss this moment. Don't miss the coming of the Lord. I believe Jesus wants to heal someone. And if you've never been baptized, Jesus can fill you with his spirit. If you haven't received, amen, the ability to be buried in his name, you can be baptized in the name of Jesus tonight. I'm inviting, I'm inviting everyone to not miss the moment and anticipate. Would you pursue, would you pursue the coming of the Lord? Some stony hearts are going to be made flesh. Hallelujah. People are not going to miss out the moment. And people are going to see God extinguish and run out every thief in your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not missing this moment. I'm not missing the moment to move with you, God. To be moved by you. To be impacted by you, Jesus. Jesus wants to heal you. Jesus wants to restore you. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. Don't miss the moment God has given you tonight. In the name of the name of Jesus. I'm not turning back now. He's been too good. He's been too great. I'm going to proclaim his glory. I'm going to pursue him. I'm going to leave this place changed. With my heart set on fire for him. Hallelujah. I'm not turning back now. Oh, mighty God. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back, hallelujah. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. Come on, would you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? Would you pray in the Holy Ghost today? Would you let the Spirit of God begin to fill? God, set my heart ablaze. God, move in my life. Oh, Jesus. God, I pray that this addiction would be broken. 
God, I pray that this weight would be broken. I pray the bands that are trying to keep me captive would fall off of me, God. I pray the chains would be broken in God. I pray, Lord, that you would turn my heart into a heart of worship, a heart of praise, a heart to love you, oh Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord.